Hey guys, how's it going? Previously on the channel, we were working on this 1970 John Deere 140H3. I wanted to take a second and apologize. Last week, I uploaded a video of this tractor, and apparently the video that I uploaded, I screwed it up miserably. I record the videos on my phone. I started doing that after my camera screwed up on me. And I have an editor on the phone that I edit all the clips together so that way I'm not sending a whole bunch of clips over to the computer. And then I will download them from YouTube to my computer, edit them, and then re-upload the video to YouTube and title it. Apparently, I screwed up when I did the last video on this tractor. I must have thought that the video that I had sent over to be edited on the computer was the one that I needed to publish. So that one got published. I think I have the edited version of it on the computer still. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna upload it or not. I thought about uploading it instead and deleting the other video, but by the time I got to it, it was too late. Uh, it had been already up for a day and it had over 200 views on it. So I thought, well, at this point I'm kind of stuck. So I'm just gonna leave it alone. I do apologize for that. Uh, that was uh, my bad. It's never happened before and hopefully it won't happen again. So previously in the video, we were working on this 7140. We got an engine to it out of a 71 or a 74 H3. The engine had a severe oil leak. I ended up taking the engine over here, pulling it out of the tractor, taking it apart. It had balance gears in it, so I removed the balance gears. I didn't take the engine apart. The top one, the bottom one came out easy. The top one I had to um, perform operation on and get it out. All the pieces are out of the engine. One thing I also noticed on this, and it's given me a suspicion, is the crank says 10 under, or I think it says 10 under. It's got a zero one zero on it, which I'm thinking is 10 under. So I'm wondering if somebody at some point had this engine rebuilt they had the crank board down. And also another thing that I had spotted was the oil pan. One of the bolts was stripped, so I had to redo all the threads. And the other ones were not very far behind. Also, the bolts were kind of short, so I put some longer bolts in it. Uh, I'm waiting on a gasket for it right now so I can get the engine all put back together. But everything, for the most part, is all set and ready to go. This thing is ready. I had that towel over top of it. The only concern that I have right now is the piston. It has a small little bit of play in the rod, but I'm hoping that that's just end play and uh, it's not gonna bother anything. I did take the balance gears out. They were, they were pretty wore out. So I just went ahead and dealt with them. That way in the future, I wouldn't have to deal with a blown up engine. This is probably not gonna get a whole lot of use. Another thing I've done to it is I messed with the hydro underneath. I messed with the linkage after I got the engine pulled out of it. Not sure if it's fixed or not. I am curious to find out and we're gonna probably end up finding out in this video if my adjustment helped it any or not when it comes to getting more speed out of it and also more power. Had a lot of trouble going uphill I noticed so it, I think this Hydro is wore out, but it's, it's had a rough life, I can imagine. It came to me with a tiller, and it also had a 39-inch deck on it. So I'm st I've got my suspicions. So let's go on ahead, and I'm going to put the final touches on it. I'm going to put the oil gasket or the oil pan gasket in that engine. I wasn't going to film this, but I thought, well, I might as well. That way you guys know what's going on. And once we get the engine put back together, we'll take this out and we'll do some tilling. So getting back into this 140, I have finally got the seal. So we can go on ahead and get that installed in here and get this thing hopefully running again. So let's see about getting this in here. The seal has some grease on it already. So hopefully we shouldn't have to help it too much. It should just go right in. There it goes. There it goes. It wants to. So now we just gotta ease it in a little bit. <coughs> That's 
what she said. <laughs> and uh, once we ease it in, we can go on ahead and I guess get the flywheel put back on. I don't really have a good way for putting seals in. I'm sure there is a good one. I just kind of send them in, you know, until they're even, damn it. There we go. Hopefully that went in. And of course, the way that this thing is set up in here, I hate doing that with a screwdriver like that. I don't want to puncture that seal. This one will work as a good punch. There we go. That, I would say, actually looks to be... Probably about as good as it's going to get in there. Grab a light real fast so I can take ourselves a peek. Yeah, I would say that's in there good. It looks fairly even. It needs to come down a little bit. Uh, it needs to go in a little bit on this side, but I think that's pretty much it. We could just drive it in until it hits on the crank on all four sides. We could do that. Side hits. There we go. Hopefully that seal is in even now. Should be. Yeah, actually that looks pretty good to me. So now, <clears throat> we can go on ahead and get the flywheel and everything else put back on. I'm probably just gonna go on ahead and do that all off camera. And then once I get the flywheel and everything put back on, you guys have already watched me take it off. So it's the exact same basically as putting it back on. So there you go. I'm gonna get this took care of and then I will bring all of you back. And once I bring you back, we can go on ahead and dig in a little further. Well, I got oil in the engine now and I got gas in the tank. Let's go on ahead and let's see if this engine will start up. Hopefully it'll start. And if it does, we'll go on ahead and test that tiller.
a pillar. which I guess is a good thing. So, we've got a problem with this thing. I cannot kill it. I pulled the wire off of here, and it would not stop running. So I pulled the throttle body back as far as I could, and I got it to shut off. I almost went to pull the spark plug wire, but after looking at it closer, the ground was in my way, so I couldn't really get to it even if I wanted to, so there was a problem. So we gotta figure out why this is uh, getting power, and actually, now that I'm thinking about it, that's kind of warm. I'm gonna go on ahead and unhook that wire. Oh, never mind. it shouldn't be getting power right now because the engine's not running. So, wait a second. Why we're getting power at the moment, I have no... Wait a minute here. That's the wire that... Why the hell does that wire go down to the... Oh, I think I just found the problem. No, wait a minute. Yes. Why does that go down here? That's the problem right there. That's hooked up to the wrong wire. What the hell? This wire comes off of the voltage regulator. That's sending power right to the coil. Um, okay, at least we know the charging system's good. So then where's the right wire? Even better, why is that wire got that end on it? What does that go to? I'm going to have to do some wire chasing, I think. But yeah. <laughs> it's kind of smoky. <laughs> that actually looks kind of cool on camera. Looks like a concert if you look at that. So, let me get this figured out. And once I do that, we'll get right back into this thing. It's currently 1.30 in the morning. So... I'm thinking I'm going to go on ahead and call it for the night. Um, and then probably tomorrow we'll get back into this thing and, I don't know, figure it out from there. So it's the next day. I did some voltage testing and my suspicion was right. Somebody hooked it up so that the, the uh, stator is sending power to the coil from the regulator, which is an absolute no-no. So I unhooked the stator. It's not hooked up right now, so it's not going to charge. So that problem should be eliminated. It should run right now. I'm probably gonna have to go through it and do some rewiring here sometime soon, but you know, at the moment we can just leave it alone. But at least we know the charging system works. That's a good thing, I guess. So let's go on ahead and start this little girl up. And once we get her started up, we'll take it outside and drive it around, make sure it drives good. And then I wanna go take it and try doing some tilling with it and see how it does. Ready? That was quick. Wow. Okay. I am impressed.
moment of truth. Let's see if it'll lift and lower that tiller. That's a chain. I don't have a linkage for it. I put a chain on it and it worked. Alright, well, let's see if it'll spin it over. than I thought it did. Let's get it up into position. I gotta put some air in that other tire. And once we do that, we'll go on ahead and try chilling with it. fast that tiller
First time in 20 years that tractor has spun dirt. It did a good job. And if you want to know how much oil it's burning, get a good look at that. Wow. That's why it's smoking so bad. Did really good though. This is wet. Definitely a lot nicer now and a lot flatter, which is good. I might come back through actually and get this little spot right here, but I might eh, probably leave it alone. All right, well, I guess let's go on ahead and get this thing took back to the shop. oil it burns which is actually pretty nice to see hopefully that engine's coming back around and hopefully it's not just burning itself out of oil and very low <laughs> that's kind of what i'm nervous about right now i'm worried that that's exactly what happened it's just low on oil i don't hear no knocking i also pulled them valve balance gears out of it and i definitely noticed a difference it used to have a Pretty decent tick to it, although now since I've taken those balance gears out of it, I don't hear that tick anymore in the engine, so there you go. All right, guys, I want to thank all you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If this is your first time checking out the channel, please consider going down below, hitting that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a thing. It tells YouTube that you guys like these videos and that you want to see more as well as myself. And um, it also helps me out, you know, when it comes to wanting to actually make these videos. I don't make... I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't make anything off these. I just make this for pure enjoyment because I like doing this. I like bringing old rusty stuff back from the dead and getting it going again. I like it. Sometimes I like a challenge, you know, other times, well, I kind of have to step away from it a little bit. For example, this one, however, hopefully here soon, we'll be getting back into him here soon. So yeah. All right, guys. I want to thank you for watching. And I will catch all of you, hopefully, in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye.